Today we're going to be talking about collisions of objects in one dimension. We're going to be covering both elastic collisions and inelastic collisions, and I'll define those terms momentarily. We'll be talking about two limits of collision. So consider the circumstance, you know, this, this thing up here uh, in the top right hand corner as we talk about this. There are two limits to collision. In the first limit, the two objects bounce off of each other when they collide with no loss of kinetic energy. Um, and in the second limit, the two objects collide with each other and stick together. And in that one, they possibly lose kinetic energy. And so uh, these are two limits, and thus they're idealized. Most collisions are actually somewhere in between. So in other words, um, a bouncing basketball is a good example of something that bounces with very little loss of kinetic energy, though every time it bounces, it does lose a little bit. Whereas if you took a uh, book and dropped it on the ground, or dropped you know through two things like books at each other, they will not really bounce off of each other. If you threw a lump of clay at something, it's going to stick, and it's probably, or if it does bounce, it's only going to bounce a tiny little bit. So in reality, these two limits, where you bounce off and can perfectly conserve kinetic energy, or perfectly stick together, are really the two limits, and most stuff is somewhere in between. In this circumstance, momentum is always conserved. So, in uh, Newton's third law tells us, right here, that the force that object A exerts on object B is minus to, and is equal to and opposite in sign, the force that object B exerts on object A. And so, if you consider the impulse equation right down here, which says that the change in momentum is equal to the integral of force over time, if our two objects collide with each other, they exert the same magnitude of force but in opposite directions. So that means that their change in magnitude, since they're in contact with each other for exactly the same amount of time, their change in, in momentum is going to be exactly the same but in, but in opposite directions. So in other words, if one object gains momentum, the other object must lose the same amount of momentum. Energy, however, is not necessarily conserved. If it is, then it's called an elastic collision. That's when kinetic energy is perfectly conserved. And if it's not, it's called an inelastic collision, or not elastic collision. And that means that the kinetic energy is not conserved. And so, where does it go if it's not conserved? It goes into heat, and it goes into sound. And so, in fact, energy, the total energy is conserved. However, the kinetic energy is not, because the kinetic energy gets transformed into other forms of energy. But the important thing to remember is that in an elastic collision, kinetic energy is conserved, and also momentum is conserved, recall. And in an inelastic collision, kinetic energy is not conserved, and only momentum is conserved. So now we're going to actually try this out. So now we're going to consider this simple situation. We have a car with a mass of m moving to the right uh, towards another car with a mass of 2m on a frictionless surface. So both of them are moving initially at 10 meters per second, where the car on the left, which has a mass of m, is moving to the right, and the car on the right is moving to the left. Both are going 10 meters per second. Um, subsequently, they collide. What is the final velocity of the system, assuming A, perfectly inelastic collision, and B, a perfectly elastic collision? And so we're going to take each one of these in turn. So we'll do inelastic first and elastic second. So the first thing we're going to do is do the inelastic collision. And recall, in an inelastic collision, momentum is conserved, but kinetic energy is not. And so the first thing I'm going to do is define a couple terms. I'm going to say that V, which is just going to be equal to 10 meters per second, is going to be our uh, initial velocity of each of the cars. So this will be our speed. Um, cart 1, which is going to be the left cart, has an initial momentum of M times V. Cart 2 is going to have an initial momentum of, and we'll call these 1 and 2, of uh, 2m times minus v, 
So minus 2mv, because remember the, the car 1 is moving to the right and car 1 is moving to the left, and this is all in one dimension. And so in an inelastic collision, we know that p initial is equal to p final. And so what we know is that mv minus 2mv is equal to p final. And the final momentum is just the mass times velocity of the resulting system. So it's going to be m plus 2m, since that's the total mass, times v final. And so what I can do now is solve this. And I can see that on the left hand side I'm going to get minus m v and on the right hand side it's going to be 3m times v final. So I can divide through. I see that my m's cancel and I'll see that v final is equal to minus v initial divided by 3 and that's equal to minus 3.33 meters per second, which makes sense. And then, because going up to our picture up here on the top, we see that the mass of the two carts are going at the same velocity. However, the one on the right is bigger, and it's moving to the left. And so overall, you would expect that the system would be moving to the left. And so, when we scroll down here, we see that in fact it is moving to the left. So now we're going to solve the elastic collision. And so in an elastic collision, both momentum and kinetic energy are conserved. And so what this means is we have an extra equation that we have to worry about. Now, this does uh, substantially increase the complexity of the solution, uh, which is why we often avoid doing this in lecture if we possibly can. But what we can do then is show uh, we can solve it once in a very general sense, and then anytime you have a 1D collision, you just go ahead and use this. And so to do that, first we have to set up our equations. And so first off, we have conservation of momentum. What we're saying here for our equation for conservation of momentum is that the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum, and that's m1 v1 initial is the momentum of the first object initially, m2 v2 initial is the momentum of the second object initially, m1 v1 final is the same is the final momentum for the first object, m2 v2 final is the fi is the momentum for the second object. So now we can go down to energy and we can say that one half m1 v1 initial squared is the kinetic energy the initial kinetic energy of object one, and then one half m2 v2 initial squared is the same thing for object two. And then on the right hand side we have the final total kinetic energy and it's conserved because it's an elect elastic collision. So it's 1 half m1 v1 final plus 1 half m2 v2 final. And so these two equations um, can be a challenge to solve. I mean, so you could do something like solve it with a quadratic equation because you do have two equations and two unknowns. However, solving with a quadratic equation is actually quite painful. And so what we can do is rewrite these equations in a way that will make it simpler. And here's the beginning of our simplification. So the first thing that we're going to do is collect all the m1 terms on the left-hand side and the m2 terms on the right-hand side. And for momentum, that just means that m1 v1 initial minus v1 final is equal to m2 v2 initial minus v2 final. So this is a way of saying that the change in energy for object 1 is equal to the change in energy for object 2. And then in, en I'm sorry, change in momentum for both of those, I'm sorry. So, so for energy, we get the change in energy for object 1 is equal to the change in energy for object 2. And so what we see is that uh, if you look closely, you see down here for uh, energy, if you have something like a squared minus b squared, that means that this is just a plus b times a minus b. And if you look directly above, up here at the expression for momentum, we see that we have a a minus b in both of these. And so what we can do is just divide through. And when you do that, what you see is that if you take uh, this equation for energy and you divide the left-hand side through by this expression, 
and the right-hand side through by this expression, they're still equal to each other because you've just divided one equation by the other, but what you've done is you've taken your quadratic equation here and reduced it to a linear equation. And in fact, it's just simply v1 initial plus v1 final is equal to v2 initial plus v2 final. And so now what I can do is use my expression for momentum, which has v2 initial and v1 initial, v2 final and v1 final, and my expression for the velocities as they add up right here. And now what I can do is take these two linear equations and solve quite easily. And so now what I'm going to do is skip all of the algebra and just show you the solutions. If you want, you're welcome to go ahead and do the algebra yourself. And so what we see is that v1 final is going to be a function of m1 and m2, which we would hope, and v1 initial and v2 initial. And so these sort of permute in a variety of ways. And what we see is that v2 final is a function of, again, m1 and m2, and then v1 initial and v2 initial. And if you look closely at these two equations, you see that v1 final solution and v2 final solution, essentially all you're doing is swa uh, swapping all of the indices from ones to twos. And that makes sense because you're conserving energy and it has to be symmetric. And so now what we can go ahead and do is solve for our specific problem. See what our answer is going to be. So we'll say that m1 is equal to big M, m2 is equal to twice that, so 2 times big M, v1 initial is equal to plus v, and v2 initial is equal to minus v. And so when we do that, when we do these substitutions and plug into the numbers above, we see that v1 final is equal to minus 5 thirds v, and we see that v2 final is equal to plus v over 3. And so that's going to be our solution, which is great, but in case you're suspicious and a little concerned about this, what we can do is just check to see if momentum has been conserved and if energy has been conserved. And so what we're going to see is that P total at the end is going to be M1, which is just M, times minus 5 thirds V plus momentum for 2, which is just going to be 2m times v over 3. And my first term here is minus 5 thirds v uh, times m, and here it's plus 2 thirds v over m. So my initial momentum is going to be minus m v. And so that works out. So the total energy then is going to be equal to, uh, let's see, so we have one half m times minus five thirds v quantity squared plus one half two m times v over three quantity squared. And so over here on uh, for equation uh, for for the first mass, it's going to be one half m times twenty five ninths v squared. So it's going to be twenty five eighteenths m v squared, just bringing everything together, plus over here on the right hand side we have one ninth, uh, one ninth m v squared. And so because the one half and the two cancel out and v over three quantity squared is v squared over nine. And so when we convert this all together we see that it's 27 eighteenths or three halves m v squared. And if you check, that's the total energy from the previous, uh, you know, from the beginning. Since it's one half m v squared plus one half times two m times v squared. So uh, momentum is, conser is conserved and energy is conserved and thus our solution is correct. So thank you very much.